Good. All right. And I'm going to get in behind you guys to hold it. All right. Okay, climb. Climb on. This is the first one where I've actually been the climber pulling the eggs. Um, so once uh, they got us all hooked up, got the ladder set, and the thermos is attached to me, we're ready to go up and pull. Today was a bit challenging. It's a pretty high tree. Um, we actually extended the ladder to the last rung, about 40 feet up, and the weather's pretty windy. The nest was also in a small branch. It was moving around quite a bit. Oh, and he's going to have some funky branches. There's just lots of branches below him. So um, so getting up there, you know, it's a little shaky. Um, so you got to just readjust and take your time and make sure you can safely pull the eggs. Um, so there were various times where I stopped because the wind was too heavy. I needed to readjust and prune some more branches away. Um, but yeah, it's definitely exhilarating and um, an adrenaline rush. And once you have the eggs and you're good to go lowering your thermos, it's a great feeling of accomplishment. We are on the edge of the Wainiha Pali at our field camp that we call Mohihi Field Camp. And we're out here today to collect the eggs of an akeke'e nest. This, this species numbers about 1,000 individuals. And we have determined that in order to save the species from some of the threats that it faces out here in the wild, there's going to be a tall order. And as an insurance policy, in case we can't accomplish all of our goals in the time available, we wanted to bring some birds into captivity. And the most conservative way of starting a captive population was to collect eggs. So we've been harvesting teeny weeny little eggs from a, a nest high, high, high above me here in the canopy. So this is just not a matter of climbing a tree and grabbing some eggs out of a nest. This is a, a well choreographed operation that you've done numerous times now. Yeah, at this point, I think we're on our 14th or 15th, somewhere in there. Nest, we did about a dozen last year. Uh, we had initially hoped to use tree climbers to scale trees to get uh, eggs out of nests, but when we realized where these birds were nesting at the tippy, tippy, tippy tops of these trees in the smallest, finest little branches, we soon realized that there was no way those kind of branches would hold a tree climber weight. And a technician that I had working with me last year came up with this ingenious ladder plan with suspending the ladders on the ropes away from the nest and not actually asking the tree to bear any of the weight at all. Yeah, I got them. The partners with the San Diego Zoo will take them to an egg house on Kauai where they'll be put in an incubator that keeps them gently moving the way a mama bird would turn her eggs to make sure that all sides are developing equal. Equally, and usually four or five days later, they hatch and they're kept at the egg house for another 10 days ish before eventually they're removed to facilities on the Big Island and on Maui that the San Diego Zoo maintains for its program conserving Hawaiian birds. The worst fear for these species that we're doing the egg collection for, so the akake that I mentioned and the akikiki, which numbers even fewer birds, only 500, is that they will go extinct in the wild in the next five to ten years. It's really hard to say what will happen. We've been seeing very steep nosedives in both those populations, but sometimes endangered species, when they are starting to get very small number bottom out and persist in low numbers for a very, very long time, so they could be fine for an, a little bit longer, but really when you have so few individuals in a population, all it takes is a chance event like another hurricane in Niki to come through and all of them are gone the next day.